This is Greg Dimmer for the Pulse Beat Podcast. We're standing in front of the Go Dance Detroit magazine ad, which is to talk about with Sherrod Ghostin. He's a fascinating story, the founder of this magazine, and he's going to tell you his journey, and his journey really does bespeak what a person that goes through trial and tribulations and is at the top of his game because he has done something absolutely incredible. A lady called me and she said, hey, I'm getting ready to start ballroom classes. You should come check out uh, my space. Previously to that, she had wanted me to come check out her nonprofit um, that she had for kids, and she wanted me to come speak to her kids, and she wanted show she wanted to show me her space, and she was starting a ballroom class, and I was leaving Eastland Mall, which, as we all know, is on Eight Mile, and her place was on Eight Mile, so I was already on the street um, when she called me, so I just drove down Eight Mile. It was on Eight Mile in Southfield. And that's how I got started. I had someone with me at the time. So I think he went maybe for the first class, the guy right. that was with me. And then, you know, I kept with it. Did you inspire any of your basketball buddies to seriously pursue dancing? Because you know what? Dancing, I'm talking about the people who are looking for really substantial people because everybody's looking for some way to meet someone. And I know you can go to church and meet somebody really nice or you should be able to you can go to the library meet somebody nice you can go to clubs that people tend to say don't always attract the nicest people even though i know a lot of nice people go to clubs too but if you want to meet a young lady or vice versa i'm a young lady to meet a fella tell them about the sort of people that tend to be attracted to the sort of dancing that you now have become expert in being a spokesperson and an example. Yeah, I, I've met so many people um, just from dance doctors, lawyers. Like we're talking about top people in their field, you know, just through the relationship of dance. And it's definitely a, a community where um, you can meet someone. I mean, I, I mean, I met my girlfriend through dance, but that was never really intent. I just happened. Um, to connect with her at a dance event. And she's perfect. <laughs> she's inside, outside, classy. Um, a woman certainly that has a deportment that comes from having studied dance when she walks in a room. You know, dancers have this sort of something when they walk in a room and you know that they are center stage. So certainly there are a lot of attributes about the world of dance. Now, I got to talk about two things but before we get to the magazine i want to talk about another cap another hat that you so um regularly wear and that is sherrod the writer um and you are a published author and you've written for newspapers as well but how did sherrod the writer and how does that compare to sherrod the dancer as compared to sherrod the basketball player uh it's a, a quick funny story, and, and my mom see this, she'll probably uh, be laughing hysterically. Uh, when I was a kid, we uh, at school, I think I was in the uh, second grade, Channel 2, I believe it was, came to the school, and he was looking to talk to kids that had saw anybody in their family get shot or murdered. Now, at the time, I had never uh, seen it. But I made up a story about me actually seeing a family member getting shot. So I told them, you know, I was in a liquor store with my uncle um, and I saw these guys looking uh, through the door and we walked outside and they shot him in the head and killed him right there. So the channel two bought it. So that night uh, I was in the room with my mom and a teaser came up like what's coming up next on the news. And she saw my my face up there, like an interview just like this. <laughs> And she was asking, like, what did I do? Like, why am I on the news? Uh, so the writing ability came from there. And my mom always encouraged me, like, you should start writing. And so then I started writing in 2010. And in two months, I had written my first book. Wow. And then from there, I'd written another one. And in, like, 18 months, I think I'd written, like, seven or eight books. Now, 
Your mother is an evangelist and let everyone know who she is. I want to say to some, you know, when I had a chance to meet her, something about you is that you're a very classy guy. And when I met your mother, they say the apple does not fall far from the tree. There's something that you cannot buy and that is class. And your mother has that class that once again, um, either you're born with it or you're not. So say something to mom because she's going to be watching this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom. I, I learned a lot from my mom. Give her. Say her name. Uh, Angelique. And like my mom, Angelique Spires, she's an evangelist. My dad's a pastor, Pastor Daryl Spires. Yep. Uh, but my mom, yeah, my mom, my mom is also a fighter. I don't know. Like my mom grew up in the hood. So I'm not going to tell her her nickname that she had in the hood, but. Just whispered in my ear, only about a million people could possibly be watching it or more, but they won't tell either. Okay, that's the way we won't go there. That's another, that's part two. What is it? Say it. Nobody will really hear us. No, they, they used to call my mom G Money. Oh, we well, see G Money, but you know what? G Money has become God's money because God's money is good money. So that whatever money she's making is because of the grace. And the amazing grace of God that certainly has touched your life and has been a part of your DNA. Your dad's a pastor, your mother an evangelist. So certainly your great fortune right now, I do believe, is certainly rooted in God's amazing grace. No? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my dad's a really hard worker. My dad and I grew up around um a hard working family. You know, my grandmother moved up here, just like a lot of our grandparents did because of the factory jobs. Uh, but my grandfather used to uh, ask me all the time, you know, am I a go-getter? And I never understood what he meant by that. He would just always ask me. And it wasn't until I think this year that I realized what he was actually asking me. And he never told me, but he always showed me. Like he used to take me to the flea markets uh, with him while he sells stuff. And I used to ride with him when he had picked stuff off the curve and make it look like new again. So it was just the act of him showing me what a go-getter actually was and which I can attribute to, you know, the reason why I work the way I do nowadays. You know, like I did the, the one year anniversary party two weeks ago, but I'm already my mind is already in 2020, you know, and we're just now uh, getting ready to finish up 2018. So I'm always thinking about what's next. And I never really settled too long on what I just did. Wow. And, you know, for those of you who might have not joined us from the very beginning, you're watching the Post Beat Podcast with Greg Dunmore, and I have a very special guest, the remarkable Sherrod Gloston, who is a athlete, an artist, a dancer, a renaissance man, a true renaissance man, and we are filming this at the end at 97 Winder in the heart of downtown Detroit across from Little Caesars Arena about a block away. It is one of the fantastic spots in Detroit that symbolize why this city um, is world class. And if you have not had a chance to know about the end at 97 Winder, we're going to be, as we unfold this podcast in the upcoming weeks, you're going to find out why this place is a true gem in the heart of Detroit. And you, we, we get a chance to talk to so many fascinating people. Patricia Stallworth, you are watching, and it says you're money in the right, and I'm reading something not knowing what it's saying. G money in the right way. Oh, G money in the right way. Okay, so that was a little note coming from our producer, Joel Boykin. G money in the right way. So she's saying, too, that G money. See, G can also stand for gangster, right? But it can also stand <laughs> for God. And in this case, it certainly stands for God. Now, let's just jumpstart a little bit more. So we know you as a writer. You have written a novel. You have also written for newspapers. You wrote for the Ferndale. Oh, Fern, um, Ferndale Friends. They, they was the first newspaper to give me a chance. Yes. Yeah. And I read your articles and certainly it showed the sort of talent that you have as a writer. But You've done something that is history making. Go Dance Detroit is the first and only magazine that I know about that really is talking about the history and the dance um, component that's in the city of Detroit. There's a dance community in Detroit. And what inspired you to say among the many things that I must do magazine publisher well, i'm gonna i'm gonna give you some exclusive uh intel right now 
Oh, this is a post be media podcast exclusive. So this is a moment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's only uh, maybe three people that know this story. Uh -oh. Um, but the the magazine that you see now, it was uh, originally the idea came to be for prison inmates. Um, the magazine idea. What what I had learned is that a lot of guys in prison they like to keep their ear to the streets. Mm -hmm. um, so they will order magazines like uh, King Magazine, um, uh, different magazines like that, uh, Hip Hop or Source Magazine, just to try to see like or hear, read about what's going on out in the streets. And But some of them will get turned down, whether it's from the content or they have half-naked women in the magazine. So I, I, I told a homeboy of mine, I said, you know, what if I created a magazine uh, for prison inmates that I knew for sure would never get turned down. And, you know, it can be like, you know, where to get jobs when you get out and, and have information like that, that they can stay abreast uh, um, to. And I ordered, you know, magazine books, like, you know, how not to start a magazine and how to correctly start a magazine. So that's what the, that was the original, original idea mm -hmm. about the magazine. And it wasn't until 2016 well i say well you know about this time i was three years in into dancing that's when i said okay i'm going to do a dance magazine because it was a need for it and when i started to create it you know i told myself <clears throat> um whether i sell one ad or 20 the magazine is still going to come out people need to know who everyone is in their community uh, they need to know where they can buy dance shoes or um, events that are coming up. So, and that was the real intent um, behind it. I just wanted people to know who they are. Like people have no idea. And, and, and what you've done in this history making is because when I talk to so many of your fans, they will tell me that Sherrod is the only person that has brought together the diversity of dance communities in Detroit under one roof. Now, let's just have a little sampling of the sort of communities that exist now. I know that you have the urban ballroom dancers and then you have the um, swing dancers, but continue that list so the audience will know the various communities that shine in the dance world in Detroit. You have the Kizamba community. Um, they're up and coming right now. It's probably the hottest thing that is that is get, that is blossoming right now. Say it again. The, with the word again. Kizamba. Spell it for us. Uh, K i z o m b a. They're really taking. Uh, they're rising right now. So they're the newest community that is happening. What kind of right dancing now. is it? Like salsa dancing or what? It comes from Angola. I'm not going to say too much about it. I know a little bit. I know that much. It comes from Angola, so it will remind you of. Uh, the closest thing that I can tell you right now, and I don't want to say the wrong thing again, is that it reminds you of like merengue. Right. You know, um, so. Merengue de la República Dominicana. From Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic. <laughs> yeah. So Kizamba and Simba, those two are like the up and coming right now. And also Zouk. Uh, Zouk is starting to flourish in Michigan right now. But we have Argentine Tango, um, the salsa community. Shout out to the Detroit Casineros. Um, the swing community, Detroit style ballroom community. Um, traditional barroom, uh, my waltzers, my fox trotters, my West Coast swingers, um, and it, and it's a quite a few more. You know, it's so many people um, that dance in this community, and they just don't know where to go. Is there more rivalry or camaraderie? And be truthful, because we like drama. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that rivalry is not the right word. Um, it's just people really just don't know. Right. Like everyone that was there can say that they really just didn't know that all this was happening because you get so comfortable Let's it's like family members that don't know each other right and they come together at a family reunion exactly i said it to someone i want people to look at, at go dance detroit events like a family reunion like you're seeing your distant cousins because we're a dance family i tell everybody that, that, that and that's the goal like i just want people to know i want people to know who people are in your backyard Wow. Now, I'll tell you that when I attended your first event, and I've been familiar with dance for a very long time, but certainly as of recent, the popularity of dancing with the stars and the dance shows that are on the major networks that are um, highly rated and very popular. And so it's very trendy now. But there is something about when I see 
dancers and the passion that the glow that they have the sort of heartfelt connection that when the body is moving to music and they're making love in the most wonderful way that you need to make love in a very public way this is what your dancers do under one roof and i saw the salsa dancers i saw the people doing the waltzing the foxtrot and the tango and all of the other traditional forms as well and i thought this is absolutely stunning it was amazing it was electric to see so i want you to talk to someone watching that they don't know in 2019 that they're going to be dancing because of what you're going to inspire them to do so give them talking from your heart to them why they must now look at 2019 and dancing to be high on their must-do list that was a really great uh, um, intro and be, and this is something that I'm really um, focusing on. Um, I think I'm going to use the young adults because people my age and under, you know, they go to these uh, clubs like hip hop clubs and, you know, they can't go by themselves without thinking that, um, they're not safe when they leave. Um, and a lot of people go to clubs, and I was one of them too, and you just see them just standing along the walls and, you know, they're listening to music, but I really having a good time. And people ask me, you know, what if I don't know how to dance? Can I come to your event? <clears throat> and my, one of my responses was, well, what do you do when you go to like regular clubs? Like you probably just sit and stand around, you know, grab a drink or two, but that's it. Um, when it comes to dancing, and I tell people all the time, it's really a fam I I don't I've never saw a problem um in, in the last five years of me dancing. I never saw any fights, I never um saw anything like that happening when out when it's I It's a love fest in the really literal sense of what loving people do when they come together and you know what see we're part of a cell phone community too and when i go to some of the hip-hop clubs i'm not saying they're not engaged in the music but there is something about the kind of dancing that you're advocating that brings together the human and the physical and the spiritual and the rhythmic all together and that's how the magic is created yeah and if you just think about you know why why old school music is so timeless because it, it really makes you feel good. You know, listening to dramatics and the temptations, like it really makes you feel good. And then now I get to dance to that type of music. And we're, we're waiting to see. Now, that's old school for some of us. It's not all that old, but okay, old school. But guess what? When I was at the Masonic Temple, what was the group they were so great and they went back to tony bennett and frank sinatra and duke ellington you had a jazz trio and they were absolutely outstanding it was a throwback to another era and when i watched you watch them and i saw how you were appreciating their artistry i thought wow now this is truly what we call cross-generational who were those musicians the c notes i, I met the c notes actually i was with uh asanya at the time, we was at Cliff Bell's. It was one of our first few dates, and we saw this Gowney piano, uh, Mark LaDuca, and uh, he was really good, and they was playing really good music. And this is, when it comes to a Go Dance Detroit event, I'm, I'm, I'm setting a standard, and I'm not, and I'm so, uh, I'm in a lane of my own. I'm not trying to do anything that anybody else is doing. I'm always looking for, um, a, a way to set a standard and i i told the dj uh kim the spin dr james by the way i said you know i'm going to add a live band for the beginning i don't want people to come in and music is just punching in their ear i want people to come in and i want the ambiance to be set because we're coming into the, the historical masonic temple now, there's two chandeliers huge chandeliers and it's artwork in here like i want the night to be eased into and not just come in and it's like oh let me get the dance right now you know and drop everything i wanted people to appreciate it and talking to kim james this morning we're already talking about next year and i told him like, we gotta go higher 
it just when you when you think that uh, we've set a, a, a bar high, we're not because my, my brain doesn't work like that. And one thing I loved about your setting is that when we talk about diversity, and that's a popular word now, buzzword and inclusion, you really are about diversity and inclusion. I saw all ages. I saw people from various cultural backgrounds. I saw people from various walks of life, but always walking on the right side too. I'm saying that because I didn't see the sort of people that, um, oh, I see Evangelist Angelique, um, your mother is watching. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know what? Classy lady, classy daddy, classy son, and Michelle um, Perizon, and we love her as well because she has been, she's another author too, Michelle Perizon. She has a book that she's going to be launching um, to inspire young ladies and uh, social media and what that means to um, the development of the social graces. And I'm sure that she and you are going to get together because I want some of the young ladies that she is encouraging to do what they have to do to really embrace being a young lady of class. Dancing has to be on the menu, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I really recommend people like the way that um, back then Detroit was a dancing city. I mean, it is now, but people don't know that when blacks started moving here, that's the way they found out where the other blacks were, like through the jazz clubs and, you know, walking down the street and seeing people dancing. And the way the development is going now, like it's looking like, oh, my way here, just driving up Woodward. I was like, wow, you know, it's uh, it's really starting to come up and it's going to be a time. And, and maybe I'm going to be the pioneer that is that everywhere you go to the clubs in Detroit, you're going to have to be dressed a certain way and it's going to be dancing happening. Yeah. And dancing, once again, is such a wonderful expression it involves so many vital parts of what gives balance in one's life now i want you to before we say not goodbye but see you again because your story we've we've only touched on it now this is just to introduce you because i've got to delve a little deeper in some other aspects of this young man's remarkable life but i want you to complete a few thoughts and i'm going to just throw some things at you and i want you to complete the thought dancing save my life because um it, i wouldn't have never had the connections that i have now i didn't i didn't all those people that you saw there it was not really done um by me it was through the relationships um that i that i've had and i tell uh, my girlfriend this every time and she'll tell you the day that go dance detroit like fails is the day that it failed because of the lack of integrity and the lack of character. God certainly is always number one in success. But, Sherrod, another important key to success is just working. Just, just work. And it's so easy to want to cliche the phrase staying humble, but that's not really it. You just got to be hungry. And that's not easy to do. It's it's easy for people. I see it all the time. People start stuff and then they stop doing it. It's being consistent and just staying hungry. When I stop dancing, I will. Oh, I'm going into film. Definitely. Definitely. I'll definitely be in the film, like all of the books and stuff that I've written, all the stories in my head. That's That's my next big thing, going into film. Now, you were supposed to say, when I stop dancing, I will no longer be living. <laughs> <laughs> but then film, though. So, I mean, you can do dance and film, too, right? Yeah, but but uh, dancing takes up a lot of time. Magazine takes up a lot. Those are two full-time things there. Um, so, at, at the end, I will probably, for sure, own a studio where I won't be, the, like, the main dancer. Um, the magazine will still be running, but I'll have a team so large that I don't ever have to be there. I can work remotely. But definitely film is going to be what, what is what I'm ending this life doing. Of the various genres and um, types of dancing, my favorite dance style would be... Oh, Detroit Style Ballroom. And what makes Detroit Style Ballroom so exceptional is... I like R&B music. Yeah, I, I like dancing R&B music. And when your book is written... 
and the movie about your life is made, its title will be The Man That Made a Difference. The Man That Made a Difference. And Will Smith might play you, or maybe Sherrard Glosson is going to play himself. Maybe. Possibly. I'll definitely play myself. <laughs> 2019 is going to be a great year because my head is uh, 2019 is already planned out. I'm already in 2020. Oh, well, 2020 <laughs> is going to be even a greater year than 2019 because because I planned for it five years ago, five years ago. <laughs> so now I want you to let the audience know how they can be supportive. Give them a website, a number, a way that they can subscribe to the magazine and also how can they contact you? Because there are people watching you right now that they need to be connected to somebody that can teach them how to dance or connect them with fellow dancers because there's a wide audience of people that are just eager to know what you are bringing to the table. Absolutely. So you can, you can find anything about Go Dance Detroit at GoDanceDetroit.com. Um, anything that you try to subscribe to a magazine, um, you can send me an email at GoDanceDetroit at gmail.com. And far as learning how to dance, there are so many instructors out here. Like I, I send people to other instructors. You know, I I know a lot of dances, but I'm not well versed. So I don't always just want to take in people just because I can teach them a couple steps. I, I send people everywhere. So you can find me at go dance detroit at gmail.com, go dance detroit.com, Instagram. Uh, my personal Instagram page is creative rod. That's creative, then R O D. You can find me there. Um, all writers, entrepreneurs, like, like we need to get together. Like, I think that's important. You know, I'm a part of a, a, a group that's not even from here, and it's just all entrepreneurs called the Sleepless Nights. But I need that here. Like, I need that type of energy uh, around me a little bit more often because a lot of people are not uh, wavelength thinking like that. You know, a lot of people don't have that same mindset and it helps me to be around other people that are thinking the same like me. Like my brain is three years ahead. Wow. You know, and as the saying goes, Tony Bennett, which is somebody that I'm sure you've danced to and his signature song that I always like to um, integrate into my conversation. The best is yet to come. Thank you so much for joining us on the Post Beat podcast, which is filmed. Um, you know, we do also something at Aretha's Jazz Cafe at the Music Hall. We want you to join us there as well because we are going to be unfolding your story. It's such a remarkable story. But to be at the end at 97 Winder across from Little Caesars Arena on Winder Street and to be in this wonderful world-class setting talking to a world-class gentleman, it doesn't get any better than this. So thank you so much for joining us. And this, remember, is part one. So any shout out? Yeah, I can do shout outs. Um, just shout out to everyone that has helped. And I'm going to shout these people out again. Look these people up. Um, and I probably shouldn't do this because I don't want to forget anybody's right. name, man. But I'm not, man. Everybody that helped out with the magazine party, um, I thank you guys so much. I, I, I couldn't have done that alone. The universe worked that out and everyone came through. I'm not going to say any names because I do not want to miss anyone's name. Um, but shout out to them. Shout out to my girlfriend, Saya. Um, she's been a really big help. A lot of people don't know this. You know, they saw her dress, but they didn't know that she had meatball sauce you uh -oh. know, at the bottom <laughs> of the dress. You know, because but she was helping out, you know, yeah. and just stepping, stepping it up and just being there um, for the cause. And, and it was great. So. And my shout out, and you know, I know we said goodbye or see you later, but you must support Gerard Glosson because what you have done is such an example of when one is blessed and you pass your blessing on. That's what you've done. You've been blessed and you've passed it on. And so this is going to be actually re edited and we're going to put it out. And I'm asking anybody to watch this to please make a point to pass this on to others, to encourage them to hear this young man tell his story. And you've got to support on whatever level you can, Go Dance Detroit, the magazine. And as you like to say, it's not just a magazine, it's a movement. And so once again, I want you to tell them the website and how they can contact you. And 
then we're going to really say, see you later. <laughs> yeah, go to ncdetroit.com. You can check it out. Um, you can send me a message on there. You can subscribe, um, advertise if you want. Um, 2019 event is going to be uh, it's going to be crazy, and and I'm actually getting a little goosebumps right now. But but I have something. 2019 is going to be a great year. Wow, you heard it from him first. It's going to be a great year, not just for you, not just for me but for everyone that is watching this podcast the post beat podcast and as i said before we're filming at the beautiful gorgeous in at 97 winder w-i-n-d-e-r and guess what as i said before the best is yet to come and guess who's the best everybody that's watching what we're talking about thank you so much for staying tuned and we're turning the wheel pulse of a new generation pulse